Hello, welcome. Uh, today we're going to cover section 6.1, uh, the joy of sets. So we begin with the term sets. So definition of set is a collection of objects. Uh, so that's what a set is. It's a collection of objects. So let's say that you're collecting, I don't know, you're collecting marbles, you're collecting cards. You're doing a collection. So think of think of kind of like your refrigerator. What's what's in your refrigerator? Well, the items inside the refrigerator form a set. I don't know. You may have milk, orange juice, sodas, fruit, vegetables. All those items or objects in the refrigerator makes that a set. Okay. So a set is considered to be well defined if for any set of objects we can objectively decide whether it is or it is not in the set. Uh, it must be based on facts and not opinion. So you have to have proof that that set exists, right? You have to have proofs. It can't be an opinion. So an example of that would be the numbers two, four, six, eight, ten, right? Those numbers listed there uh, are our objects. Uh, so this set is the set of some even numbers. Well, yeah, we agree that those are some even numbers that we all, you know, in school, we all were taught about even numbers. And yeah, those, those numbers do constitute even numbers, right? So that makes that well-defined because we know for a fact that those elements, those numbers or objects are considered to be the evens. So that's considered to be well-defined. However, if we say this is the set of all students' favorite numbers. Well, that's not def well-defined because I don't know what your favorite number is. Maybe it's not on the list, but that's not well-defined because it may not be true that those numbers are everyone's favorite numbers. So we label that as not well-defined. So well-defined is uh, we have proof that it is true what they say, the descriptor, right? And it's not well-defined if it's not totally true. So that's the difference between well-defined and not well-defined. Right. So the next, the next, uh, definition is called elements. Those are the members of each object in a set. So all those two, four, six, eight, those were the elements or the evens of that set. So there are three methods um, of this designating what we consider to be a set. So one is called the roster method. So there's different ways that we can des designate a set. So Listing them is one way. So this is the first one. It's called the roster method. So the roster met method is elements that are listed between braces. And please bear with me. That's how I draw braces. I try my best. Uh, and then you, you put commas in between the elements. Uh, and the order of the elements does not matter. So in some books, they do put things in order. That's how we were taught to be putting things in order but it's not a necessity. So you can put the elements in there in out, in, out any, in, in any different order that you want. It doesn't have to be any specific order. All right, so here's our first example. It says, create a set consisting of the best places to eat, to eat a hamburger. I don't know why I put each, but to eat a hamburger, right? Where are some good places to eat? A hamburger. So I have here uh, Waterburger, Burger King. Hopefully, I won't get you guys hungry. Red Robin. We have Sonic, In and Out, Earth Burger, Babes, Wendy's, Five Guys, Bubba's, Charlie's, Griff's, BJ's, and Longhorn. Burgers, I think. I don't, I, yeah, I've been there before, I think, but it's called Longhorn Cafe, Longhorn Cafe. So notice that I have braces on the start, and then I put my 
the place and then I put a comma to separate the places, right? So those, that, and then we label it. We put equals and then we label it as H. We use capital letters to designate and call the set that particular label. So I, I label it as capital H to represent hamburgers. Right? So you can label it however, whatever capital letter you want, but that's what you do to label your thing. You use capital letters. All right, now I'm craving a hamburger. All right, so we have different other, we have different other sets. Uh, this one is O equals brace one, three, five, seven, nine. And then I have these three little dots. So what does that mean? All right, well, I know the O, O represents the odds, right? It's odds, right? The odds. And these little dots at the end is infinity. So it just keeps on going, dot, 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 right? 9, 11, 13. So we don't have to list them all. We can put dot, 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 three dots to designate that it just goes on to infinity. Uh, we have another label. Uh, we have this, it looks like an N, but in the middle, it's like a little bit darker than the Ns. This, these are the natural numbers. So it starts at one, two, three, four, five, dot, 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 and it continues on. So that's the symbol for natural numbers. The W, the W are considered to be the whole numbers. These are the whole numbers. What's the difference between the whole numbers and the natural numbers? Well, the whole numbers, they start at zero, whereas natural numbers starts at one. So whole numbers begin at zero, one, two, three, four, dot, 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 and it goes on through. So that constitutes a set of whole numbers when it starts at zero. Now, when we use letters, uh, let's say, for example, I have L-E-T-T-E-R-S, right? You don't want to have lever letters that appear multiple times. So what happens is whenever you have letters that appear uh, often than, than one time, we just scratch them out and count them as one. So if you have duplicates, scratch, scratch them out, scratch out the duplicates. And, and that's gonna be considered your set. So L-E-T-R-S is the same as L-E-T-T-E-R-S. So we can scratch out the, the common ones. So the repeated ones. So elements that repeat only get count. set in roster form of the set of months that end with the letter Y, all right? So we got to think about what, let, what months in the calendar year end with the letter Y. So I'm going to designate M and then I'm going to put equals and I'll put my brace. So I know July, I know January ends with Y, February and May. So those, this is an example of a roster method. You have your braces and you have your objects separated by commas. Okay. So that's that's what they call the roster method. Okay. Now, symbol wise, you guys have to be careful throughout the book. You're going to have these symbols, so be, be prepared. So the first symbol they're going to introduce you to is the symbol. It's kind of like a C with a little line in the middle. This is used to show that an object is a member or an element of a set, okay? That's what that little E stands for. So for example, I have six is an element of, two, of the set two, four, six. So notice that this single element six by itself is an object that is inside the set. So notice this six is inside that set. So it is true. Six is an element of the set two, four, six, right? However, if you have a set two, notice it's enclosed in braces, is 
the set to an element of the set two, four, six. No, it's false because this is not an this is not a single object. It is a set. So this set is not inside this set. If it were, you would have braces around the two. If that outside left thing is the same as the outside or the, uh, the inside of the set, then it would be the same and it would be true, but it's not. This is, this is two, two different things. One, one does not have brace and that one does have brace. So if they have a brace, an element of a set, no, it's always going to be false. Okay. They can't have braces. Okay. Another example, how do I make it true? Well, like I just mentioned, if you had the set on the left enclosed in braces is an element, and then you put a brace and you put this two in braces. So you have, you have a brace within a brace, then this would be a true statement. This set is an element of that set with the set inside, then that would be true. So it's gotta it's gotta be matching. The left side of this element symbol has to match the inside of the set on the right. All right. Okay. So here's the next here's the next example. True or false? Oregon is an element of A, where A is a set of states west of Helotus. You guys are probably from Pelotus, right? All right, is that true? Well, if you look, if, you, if you're in Pelotus and you point west, is Oregon on the west of y'all? Yes, it is. It is true. Oregon is an element of all the states west of Pelotus. All right, next one. 29. Is 29 an element of 1, 5, 9, 13, 17? Right? And I, did, and I had dot, dot, dots. Suppose that I had dot, dot, dots. Well, it, mean, it means infinity. So I don't know. Wait a minute. But 29 doesn't appear. But wait a minute. Oh, there's a pattern going on. And there were dot, dot, dots. Right? If there were dot, dot, dots like that, that means it goes on forever. So I'm going to have to figure out the numbers that are beyond the dot, dot, dots. So notice I figured out that between one and five, I gotta figure out the pattern, how they go. From one to five, there's a space of four. From five to nine, there's a space of four. So that means they're going in increments of four. So if I continue that process, right? If I continue this process, if I add four to 13, I get 17, add four, I get 21. Add another four, I get 25. Add another four, bam, 29. Yes, 29 is an element of the set containing 29. So it's true. So sometimes when you see dots like that, you may have to figure out the pattern to figure out whether or not that element belongs in that set. So you'll have to continue on the set when they have the dots. All right. True or false? Is the letter Z not an element of Z, W, X, Y, Z? This is false, right? Z is an element of that, so that's why it is false. Yeah, if it had not had that little line across it, then it would be true. Z is an element, but it's saying, is Z not an element? That's what that little line means, not and element, and of course that's, that's false. All right. All right, so another method, another method is called the descriptive method. This is a second method for describing, to describe a set uh, that is used, that uses, a set that uses a short sent statement to describe the set. Well, that's terrible. I'm gonna have to erase it. 
my English is not doing well here. Uses a short statement to describe the set. So uh, here's my set. So A, my set A is equal to Ford, Toyota, Chevrolet, Subaru, Dodge, Kia, Tesla, Honda. Right? So that's set A is the type models of makes of automobiles. So that's what that said. So I have to use words to describe what that roster method is, is uh, incorporating, right? So that's what a descriptive method is. You're, you're using words to describe what that set is. Blue, red, yellow, orange, brown, green. Let's say that B is equal to that set. So what is what are we describing? What are we describing? Blue, red, yellow, orange, brown, green. What is that? Any guesses? Any guesses? I'm going to label that. Set B are the colors of chocolate M&Ms. Not Skittles, because I think Skittles has, I don't think they have blue. Do they have blue Skittles? I don't remember. But that I'm going to label that to be chocolate m and m Right, so I'm using I'm using words to describe my set. Okay. And the next one. If T equals bacon egg, bean and cheese, potato and egg, comma, dot dot dot. What am I describing? Any guesses? Yes, you're correct. Let set T is a set of all tacos, or as they call it up north, breakfast burritos, whatever. It's tacos. Here in San Antonio, they're called tacos, not breakfast burritos. All right, so that's that's what we're using to describe the set. We're using statements to describe the set. All right, the third, the third, the third uh, way to write a set is called a set builder notation. So for a set builder notation, it uses letters for variables and symbols. So here's an example of what a set builder notation looks like. So it looks kind of funky, right? So this is probably gonna be the only time you guys are gonna see some math in this course. So we have braces, X, and then a line. Then we have X, and then there's the element. Oh, you guys remember that with symbol? These are the natural numbers. and X is, you guys remember what that symbol was? This symbol is less than seven, right? So translating it into English, right? So this X is the set of all Xs. This line here means such that. This expression here is X is a natural number and x is less than seven. Right? That's what that symbol is, is less than. So we'll have to kind of review um, the, the inequality. So that's an inequality. Right? So if you haven't had math in a while, uh, we need to talk about inequalities. So there are, there's four different one of them. There's four different inequality symbols. So we have the less than, the greater than. Notice how I, this is how I, I, I was taught in school how to remember the distinguish between less than and greater than. So it kind of looks like a capital L, you get it? Less than, and then and then you got to use your vivid imagination for this one. But it looks kind of like a G, you get it? Greater than, greater than. So some of you were taught the the, uh, I guess alligator eats the bigger number, right? Or the Pac-Man, my generation. So whatever works. This is less than, that's great. You always read it left to right. Blah is less than blah. Blah is greater than blah, right? The difference between those and this one is that you have this underline. So this one means less than or equal to. And this one means greater than or equal to. 
So those are the four inequalities that we look at when we deal with the set builder notation. So this one says x is less than seven. X is less than seven, which means all the numbers that are smaller than seven, but you don't include it. So all the numbers that are smaller than seven is six, five, four, three, two, one, zero, dot, dot, dot. It just goes on forever and ever. Whereas if you have X is less than or equal to seven, then you start at seven and then you start going in descending order all the way to dot, dot, dot. Right. So if it's not underlined, you don't include it. When it is underlined, you include that number. Another symbol that you guys are gonna have to be aware of is the empty set. All right. So the empty set. What is the empty set? The empty set looks like this. It's a you have braces and you have an O with the line through it. That's what the empty set means. It means there's nothing inside of it. This is this set is not empty, right? So when you put it around, if it, if it, if it didn't have these braces, it would be nothing, right? But we're calling it a set. So we're, tell, we're saying that inside the set is nothing. So it doesn't make sense, right? Well, Inside the box, there has to be something inside. Maybe there's air, right? So this set is not empty. It's the set containing the empty set. So it has one element. So the set itself has something inside, which is the empty set. Weird, weird, but true. So the empty set by itself, the empty, the symbol by itself, no braces, is empty. There are no elements. So. If there's braces, it's there's that one element, and there's no brace, there's nothing. It's just plain old empty. It's kind of like it's kind of like your car, right? When you when you ever run out of gas in your car, and the gauge reads on the E, right? There's still a little bit of gas in there, so that's what that means. But when it goes dead, boom, you run out of gas. It's just bad. There's a red the red light turns on, and all your the car just turns off, that's what happens. But if you're in the E, that's what that means. Okay. Uh, we also talk about the cardinal number. What is a cardinal number? So in school, when I was in uh, graduate school, because uh, I earned my degree in math, we learned the theory about cardinal numbers. And that just was mind boggling, the, the theory behind it. And I really couldn't understand what they were talking about. But now when I taught this course, uh, now I really understand what a cardinal number is. The cardinal number is this number of elements in a set given. So all you pretty much are doing is you're, you're counting the number of elements inside the set. That's pretty much what a cardinal number is. So this is a notation. They put N and then in parentheses, they put the, the set. So what is the cardinal number of A? That's what it's saying. The cardinal number of the set A. That's what that symbol means. Count the number of values inside of the set. Ain't that interesting? Ain't that interesting? So suppose that my set consists of 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. What is my cardinal number? Well, all I have to do is just count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight numbers inside my set A. That's what that's saying. How many numbers are in the set A? There are eight. Suppose I have another set. And my set consists of one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, and then dot, dot, dot. What is my cardinal number for that set? Well, it keeps on going forever and ever, so we say that it is infinite. That's the same as saying it is infinity. So you guys remember what the symbol for infinity was? Like a CP8, right? 
but we call it infinite in uh, liberal arts. We call it infinite. Finite is a set that has no elements or has a cardinal number that is a natural number. So the previous problem where we had eight, that is finite. It has a, a, a number, a specific number, a count that it has. So that's finite. But if it keeps on going to infinity, it is infinite. Okay. All right, another example. Let's say that I have a roster, I have it written in set building notation, and I say B, the set B is equal to for all X, such that X is an element of E. You guys remember what E was? E is even numbers. And X is between one and 19. What is the cardinal number of the set that consists of numbers, the even numbers that are between one and 19? All right, well, even. So if you look at the numbers from one through 19, I want the even number. So it goes, we don't count one because one is odd. So it'd be two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. And it can't go beyond 19 because nine's odd. So there's, there's your evens. How many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are nine. Sometimes you have to fill in the blanks for it. All right. Suppose that my set C consists of for all X such that X is natural numbers and X is greater than a million, a million, right? So it's written in set builder notation, right? So what would be the cardinal number for C, it goes on from 1 million and on. That would be infinite because it just goes on forever and ever. A million, one, one million, two, one million, three. Did I forget a zero? Yeah, someone just pointed out. I'm missing a zero. Thank you. This one is zero. All right, now, now we're talking about two sets. All right, so when you have two sets and it's considered to be equal, okay? Set A is equal to set B. What's the definition? You guys know what the equal, that's the symbol for equals, right? They are equal if they have exactly the same elements. So they got to be identical twins. Does you have any identical twins running in your family? They got to be identical. Same features, everything's identical. That's the only way that they are considered to be equal. All right, so true or false? Is two for the set two, four, six, eight equal to the set A, B, C? All right, are they identical? Are the sets identical? No, these have numbers. These have letters, so that is false. Right, another example is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday equal to Wednesday, Monday, Tuesday. Yes, they are identical. They're just out of order. These have three, these have three, but they have the same, they have the same dates. So yes, this is true. They gotta be the same, they gotta be identical in order for it to be equal. All right, now another definition is called equivalent. Two sets are equivalent. And this is the symbol for it. It's like a equals with a little wave, kind of like a, like a ñ in Spanish, you get the N, but it's an equal with a, with a little tilde on top of it. That's the symbol for equivalent. So what's the difference between equals and equivalent, right? So equivalent, the definition of it is, if they have the same cardinal numbers, the two sets have the same identical cardinal numbers that count, then they're, they're considered to be equivalent. It doesn't matter whether that there's one that has symbols, one has numbers, one has letters, you're counting the elements, number of elements in each set. 
if they're the same, then it's considered to be equivalent. Same amount of elements. So the natural the, the cardinal number of A has to be equal to the cardinal number of B. So for example, uh, if A is one, two, three, four, and the set B is A, B, C, D, is A equivalent to B? Well, let's count. How many numbers are in the set A? There are four. How many numbers are, how many letters are in B? There are four. Four and four is the same, so it's true. The count. The amount of objects in set A is the same amount of objects in set B, regardless of whether they're letters or numbers, but the count, you want the count. So that constitutes the cardinal number. All right. And that concludes section three. And that concludes section six. One.